Welcome to the Mary Mack Show, where we will be talking about your feelings, experiences, and pain following the death of a loved one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you find yourself in this entire world, I welcome you. So how are you doing, my friend, my warrior? I certainly hope this week has been better for you. We'd like to welcome our newest listeners from the country of Trinidad and Tobago, our 63rd country. We're very happy you have joined us. I'd also like to encourage you to take a look at our products at the Mary Max store, where we offer lovely things for yourself and others grieving the death of a loved one. You can find them at store.marymac.info or at the tab on the top margin of my website. Also, if you haven't been to the new podcast site, www.themarymacshow.com, please do visit. It would mean so much to me if you would rate and review the podcast there, and you can subscribe there also. So today, I'd like to talk to you about how children and teens deal with stress and how we can help them. Now, you might not think that children and teens deal with stress. That might not even be on your radar. But I'm here to tell you that just like us, while we're going through the death of a loved one, they're feeling the same harsh feelings as you are. The only difference is they don't speak about it very often. And it's up to us to make sure that those feelings and troubles do come out so that they can be addressed. Because stress in young people doesn't always look like stress in adults. And it's up to us to help them find ways, healthy ways, to cope. If these issues are not addressed, chronic stress, especially since the death of a loved one, can take many years to deal with. It can lead to physical and mental health problems. It can also weaken their immune system and compromise them with other health issues. Anxiety and depression are disorders that are more common in youth than in years ago, and we must take this seriously. For very young children, there is a tension in the home that can cause stress, and especially when everyone in your family is grieving the death of a loved one, it might be another parent or grandparent, even a sibling. Maybe you've lost a child, and they've lost their brother or sister, and everyone is trying to deal with it. And this can be hard for a child because They know something is going on in the home, but they can't put their finger on it, and they're too young to verbalize what is happening and what they're feeling. Sometimes young children may regress, and they start wetting the bed again. They become very clingy, 
They don't want you out of their sight. They're afraid that you may die too. And school is another frequent source of concern for your children and teens. They may have anxiety around their tests and grades. Young children can be concerned about making friends and dealing with teachers and also with bullies. Depending on how the person they love died, they can be quite concerned about how others are looking at them. If someone in the family took their life or was killed by another person or was murdered, they feel the pressure too, the shame. As children get older and become teens, they are more likely to be stressed by other events that are happening outside the home as well. They have more worries than we really understand. They're afraid of the rising suicide rates, not just among adults, but even among their peers. They are also very concerned about gun violence and feeling safe when they go to school. They don't know what to do about drug abuse. Are they involved with it? Do they use it? Do their friends use it? And that's a concern to them. And there's so much social media judgment going on and that they feel less than and their inability to stand up for themselves when confronted by others. Peers can help buffer stress but sometimes they are a source of it. Social relationships are really important to adolescents and many teens worry about fitting in and their first romantic encounters and peer pressure around substance abuse and even sex. So while most of our family are so concerned about the adults who are grieving the death of a loved one, it is the children and teens who are also grieving, and we must not let their pain go unnoticed or unsupported. And so while they are grieving a significant loss in their life, they're having all these other issues that they're dealing with in the background. And oftentimes, we don't recognize they have all these stressors going on at the same time. So let's look at different ways that they manifest these feelings. First of all, they become irritable and angry. Children don't always have the words to describe how they're feeling, and the tension bubbles up if they're in a bad mood. Now, kids that are stressed and teens, they might be more short-tempered and argumentative and hard to control. They might also have changes in behavior. Now, a young child might have been a great person, and all of a sudden, he's starting to act out more than ever before. They may be having trouble sleeping and feel that they're tired all the time. And they also might have trouble just falling asleep at night, just like you do. They may decide to neglect their responsibilities. So they may have suddenly decided that they don't want to do their homework or they forget their obligations or their chores at home. And they start to procrastinate more than they used to. And stress can be a major factor in this. They may decide to eat too little or too much. And both of these can be from stress. And also, too, their immune system is breaking down just like yours, and stress can cause many physical symptoms. They may have headaches and stomach aches and find themselves in the nurse's office more often. So let's look at ways that we can help them. So it's important that we give them a regular multivitamin preferably in liquid form, which will keep up their immune system. We want it to be functioning well. We need them to get the amount of sleep that they need now. 
Now, some say that they need between 8 to 10 hours of sleep, even 9 to 12 in some situations. But only you know how much sleep is good for them. Their bodies might just need a lot more right now. Just think of yourself, how you dive into bed when you're feeling sad and blue, and you don't want to get out of bed either. They're having the same issues. They need to get out and exercise just like you do. So maybe you can do this with them. Either a parent and a child together or the whole family. Maybe you can go on weekend hikes together and share the nature and outdoors together. It's also important to talk things out with your young ones. It is likely that during their grieving period, many stressful situations will come up and it's important that they have your ear or the ear of a trusted adult who can help children and teens put things into perspective and to help them find solutions. It's also important to find fun things to do and quiet. So just like adults, kids and teens need time to do things that bring them joy, whether that's playing their video games, practicing music, or listening to music and dancing. Children need to have things that bring them joy, so help them to uncover what those might be. Getting outside, spending time in nature is an effective way to relieve stress and improve well-being. It is also effective to write about their pain in a journal. It's been said that writing can reduce mental distress and improve one's well-being. So go with them to the store and let them choose a beautiful journal that they can use to write out all their feelings when they are feeling especially anxious or depressed. It is also helpful to watch uplifting motivational videos online, which helps your young people to believe in themselves and to know who they are. And quiet reflection and prayer can give them a sense of hope and calm. So why not start by praying at dinner together each night and giving thanks for all you have and the food that is available to you and your family? It is important to teach them that we should not take things for granted. It is also important to find a grieving children's center near you and attend their support groups as a family. This will be highly beneficial as they will be around others who understand how difficult life is right now, as they grieve the death of their loved one too. While they are attending their group session, you will be visiting with other parents who have their own group to discuss the difficulties they and their children are facing. So attending a local support group for their age group is ideal. Being around others who understand exactly what they are going through after the death of a parent or grandparent, sibling or friend will be a great help to them. They will not feel that they are so alone. Unfortunately, their peers do not have a clue on what your teen is going through and they may dismiss your child or your teen's feelings. So it's best to have them connect with others their age who are suffering a similar loss, like the death of a mother or father, sister or brother. It would be wonderful if you would model healthy coping skills. It's important to let them know that life is not fair and various struggles will come up in their lives. You want to help them become good problem solvers. Help them realize that there are many choices right now, and you prefer them going down the road of the good choices instead of the poor choices. 
Give them the balance. Show them what's possible. Help them to gain the confidence to make the right choice. And also in this day and age, social media can be so negative and so harsh to other children, even to the point where we've seen certain children pushing others to suicide. It is so horrible, so sad, and we must educate our children to understand that there will be peer pressure on social media, there will be cyberbullying, and they need to know how to limit their time online and how to turn off or defriend people like that. We also want to help them to combat negative thinking. We want them to look for the positive in life. We need to make them feel that thinking positive is the way to go so they don't go down the rabbit hole of depression and stress and anxiety, loneliness and isolation. We need to nip that in the bud immediately so they never get there. In other episodes, I've told you about Marissa Peer, whose program on I Am Enough is instrumental on helping us to feel more confident and calm. One of the most difficult issues we feel is that we aren't good enough just as we are, because there are others who make us feel less than. But it's important that they learn that this is not the case. So please take red lipstick and write the words I am enough in big letters at the top of every mirror in your home. Each time you and your child or teen uses the mirror, they subconsciously will absorb it, and within a short period of time, they will start to feel better about themselves. It is definitely a worthwhile exercise, and I hope you will start it today. And as I've mentioned many times here, learning the emotional freedom technique, or EFT, or tapping, is not just for adults. In the show notes, I will add various links to help your young people to release much of their stress, overwhelm, insecurity, and anxiety. Please take the time to learn this for yourself and with them. Do it together by imitating the practitioner and saying the words with her. Another valuable tip is to help your young ones keep a gratitude journal, just like you do. Make it a favorite project between your family members to write five things before bed each evening that you are most grateful for. When they start to get their thoughts toward the positive, it will definitely help them to not entertain negative thoughts pushed on them by friends on social media or in school. It's also important to spend quality time with your children on a regular basis. Put your phones and tablets and video games and other electronics in a drawer so you can talk with each other again. An easy way is to simply turn off the Wi-Fi modem so no one would have internet access. Put on some fun music and dance together, cook together, bake together, or encourage them to pull out a book, a real book, with softer music and simply enjoy the company of your family while each cuddling and reading. There is an excellent book called The Five Love Languages. In it, the author talks about that if you don't receive our primary and secondary love languages, we will feel as though we aren't loved by our parent, partner, or other person we are in a relationship with. There are versions for children and teens, and I can't stress enough that it's important to get these books. It will help you better understand what each of your children need from you. 
The five love languages are physical touch, cuddling, and closeness, quality time, one-on-one time, undivided attention from their parent, gifts, receiving small gifts to feel loved, words of affirmation, like, I know you can do this. I'm so proud of you. You did a great job. And the last is acts of service, whereby you help them by doing something or bringing them somewhere, like a sports game they like to see regularly, and you decide to drive them and their friends to the games. Haven't you noticed that one of your children craves your attention more than another? Perhaps they want to be alone with you more than another child. Well, their love language might be quality time. Or another child loves to snuggle up next to you on the sofa each night while they watch their TV or read a book. They need to feel you next to them. Their love language might be physical touch. Or your little one lights up when you bring them home a little toy or book. Well, their love language might be gifts. Or your teen beams when you tell them how wonderful they are and how proud you are of them and how you thank them for emptying the dishwasher or some other task that they've completed. They can't get enough praise from you and it just makes them feel so special. Well, they need words of affirmation for them to feel your love. So remember, your children and teens, even your young adults, they're all going through a stressful time, as you are, in grieving the death of a loved one. Don't sidestep this. It's just too important. Be aware of what's going on. Ask if you're not sure. If it's not you they can confide in, find another adult who you trust to have their ear. Love on them. Make sure they know how you're there for them. Do not get too busy that you can't be there for them. The love and care that you put in now will pay off dividends later in life. They will feel secure. They will know you are there for them. And you need to do this now. I'm sending you my love and hugs and confidence that you will do the right thing. So now it's time to get up and dance, dance, dance. And I know you think this is really silly, but please do it for me anyway, okay? so much for listening in today and share my podcast with those who may benefit from this knowledge. Remember to continue writing five things in your journal each night that you are grateful for. Please subscribe to my podcast and rate and review at www.themarymaxshow.com. Sign up there for my private email list so we can stay in touch. And as always, remember to be happy because you deserve to. I'll speak with you again soon.